There are those who have said hip-hop is dead, and if so, was it ever alive in South Carolina? In what is proven to be one of our most thought-provoking interviews to date, the Minority Eye sits down with a hip-hop historian, South Carolina's only living legend, DJ Prince Ice, to talk about the condition and future of hip-hop here in the Palmetto State. The biggest thing I've always told people is the business behind South Carolina's music scene has to get better. Um, the catalyst that hurt the South Carolina music scene is the self-hate that is predominant in this state. For the minorityeye.com, I'm Michael Bailey with this social report. All right, Ice, is uh, good to be here with you tonight. How's it been going, man? Good, I can't complain. We're making things happen. Been looking forward to this interview for a long time, man. I, I've been just looking forward to this. Glad to be here with you. So. It's my honor. My honor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a lot of things. Uh, you know, I got a love for hip hop, and it's a lot of things I want to ask you. You know, you got you've been doing this. You've been in the game for a long time. Got a lot of wisdom, and I want to make this interview information. So you know, I, I want to pull some stuff out of you tonight. You know what right. I'm saying? Opening up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess my first question, and, and and this is from your opinion. Where do you see or what do you believe is the condition of hip hop as a whole today? As a whole today for hip hop um, is a void. Um, there's there's some good hip hop, but there's a conflict going on. Um, I'll step back a couple of years when Nas said hip hop was dead and everyone got mad and said if it died you killed it and all these other responses. Um, Hip-hop as we knew it changed at that time. That's why he said it. Um, and then not only that, but the way hip-hop was marketed. Uh, the radio stations begin and the record labels begin to shut down their urban departments. Um, and that's once you're on the business side. And then it just became a, hey, that works. Let's make more of those. It became a carbon copy thing. And next thing you know, all the production sound is the same. Everybody's got FL Studios making the same beats. Um, and it's not that the production doesn't sound good, um, but the state of hip hop now is their variety that does exist. You know, you've got Common and Nas are some of the best albums you've ever heard out right now, but they're not played on mainstream hip hop. Not like they should be, you know? Um, and, and the mind state of Hip hop now, they they discard the, the people that have paved the way, you know, unless they're powerhouse controllers like Jay Z, you know. That's you know, get rid of Jay. Jay's got more money than everybody else in the game. He'd be as relevant as he wants to be. The substance that that made us love hip hop, I don't think it's there like it used to be. Um, everybody's making songs for a strip club. What if I don't go to the strip? Club? What if I just want to hear you talk about having a good time because times are hard and I don't want to hear about somebody trying to kill me, somebody trying to freak my girl to death, or what have you. I just want to hear somebody um, talk about having a good time, even if they do talk about meeting a girl and so forth, um, but a little more theater of the mind. You know? uh, everything's blatant and... Um, Another song on Nas's hip hop, uh, his dead album, was called "Carry On Tradition." Yeah, um, I think that that song really needs to be played for everybody that raps today because they don't carry; they're not carrying on any tradition. Major, uh, the majority of uh, the people that are in the top of. Um, see, th and, and see, that's why I wanted to get your perspective. And, and, and let me go. I, I want you to state your credentials because you've been in for how, how many decades now? Been... Let's just say <laughs> this. My mom started me music, she says, when I was three. Okay. I remember when I was five. Um, I started playing records for every family function. Mm -hmm. By the time I was eight, she taught me the piano and I was still, and um, she had a friend of hers that was a DJ in New York and I learned how to mix and by the time I was 12, 13, I was on the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was doing all my school uh, dances and everything, and mm -hmm. opening up. And, but for me, it's been a long time. Let, let's bring it a little closer to home. Mm -hmm. if, if they're saying hip-hop is dead, mm -hmm. then 
you know, was it ever alive in South Carolina? And and my question and where I'm going with this, mm -hmm. first of all, what we now have one radio station in the city that plays hip hop or dedicated right. to hip hop. The the loss of the beat. Right. Um, no, it's no more. What has been the impact on the local hip hop community or or the community as a whole? The good and bad about when we did have two radio stations, they still didn't support us. They should have with the local <laughs> artists. Um, when it was just the big DM back um, in the day when I first got on there, um, local artists only got played on my show. Mm -hmm. um, and most people remember that's kind of what has helped me champion my career, playing local music. Uh, we had two stations, um, and a lot of people were guilty, DJs, all of them, um, of just supporting this artist but not this artist. Mm -hmm. If something's good, just play it. Um, but then I said, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the politics came into play with radio. Mm -hmm. And when the corporations bought up all the stations because of deregulation in 96, 97, or the, you know, label, the labels and the record, uh, the radio station companies, the politics became strong and ten years ago they were getting reinforced and solid now it's complete uh, so you don't really hear any local artist if you do there's just a small segment something of a make it or break it whether I had a pick it or kick it or a slam it or jam it or some of those oh, yeah, and that. then after that that's it and you might have some DJs that will play uh, program or approve local music if they and it makes sense for this part if they have it in the retail stores mm -hmm. so there's some level of support but not on a grand scale that we would hope for you know? not yet so if, if I'm a local artist mm -hmm. and I want to get my music on the radio mm -hmm. it, how, how and, and what would be your advice how would I go about doing that or what's the best way if I want to walk in the door to DM this is my CD you know how would I go about doing it? I tell people don't come to the radio station first it's the last stop on your trip um, because look of <clears throat> the differences now versus 10 20 years ago you have the internet if I'm a singer rapper whatever you've got your Facebook your Twitter your social cam your Instagram your personal website, SoundCloud, Reverb Nation, and you can even load your own music on iTunes, mm -hmm. and you start promoting yourself. It's two streets now, the digital and physical. Mm -hmm. The physical, you still go to Manifest, Papa Jazz, or whatever music stores that are left. Um, sad we lost Sounds Familiar. Mm -hmm. um, and you put uh, small supplies, CDs, like you said, because there's still this little bit of crowd that's still buying and playing CDs. Okay. While the world is slowly getting to that MP3 format, because all the phones have MP3 players, so you, you don't even need an MP3 player, you just keep your phone on. So, uh, following up that, that question, what do you see, um, what's the condition of hip-hop locally? What, what do you think our artists, or what what is the caliber of the local artists here in the city, or across the state? Are we, um, is our talent here at the level it needs to be? We have some great talent. Um, <coughs> excuse me. At the South Carolina Music Awards this summer, there were artists that won awards, and they sounded great. Their music. So just as good as anything to change the future to put out. Um, they just are not getting supported by South Carolina radio. Okay. And that's, you know, the big, great debate. Um, but I tell, that's why I said what I said. I tell artists, okay, radio won't play you. But you hit those clubs, you hit that internet, you go to the community, you know, and you could, because everyone doesn't go to the strip club, if, you, if your music is just a strip club, 
I'm, you know, if, if people in the strip club are not thinking about buying a, a song when they hear, they hey, that's nice, give me another drink. <laughs> yeah. You know, dance, give me some more ones. <laughs> that's, they're not thinking about it. Um, mm -hmm. If you go to a community event and perform in front of a family and 10,000 kids and everybody of all ages, and that's when artists have to have their little versatility and still yeah. have their street cred. The streets only want you to be good. The rest of the world wants to be able to listen. Yeah. Right. You know, nice. if you yeah. say that, if you say it this, the streets say prove it. The rest of the world said, "What? Well, it sounds good. What else you got? Mm -hmm. And can I listen to it without cringing? Um, and for South Carolina artists, the biggest thing I've always told people is the business behind South Carolina's music scene has to get better. Mm -hmm. um, the catalyst that hurt the South Carolina music scene is the self-hate that is predominant in this state. But the scene has to be supported within. Um, it's like if, if you and I hear a song from an artist from South Carolina, and it's nice, and we like it, that's it. If Drake comes out with a song tomorrow, we like it, hey, we like Drake's song. Let's, li let's listen to it. Let's go download it. If MC so-and-so from Columbia and this guy from Charleston and that guy from Greenville have a good record, they do the exact same thing. Um, I think what, when people find out they're from South Carolina, they go, oh, or the, like I said, the, the, the little self-hate part is, oh, well, I went to school with Prince Ice, or I went to school with so-and-so. Well, he rapping. Yeah, it's so and so good, but man, I know that dude, man. Blah, say blah. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Talking with a lot of local artists uh, and a lot of just local people and hip hop lovers, yeah. we were all just waiting for somebody to blow from South Carolina, somebody to come through, somebody to get the deal to right. get us through the door. Mm -hmm. uh, years or so ago, we got that somebody. Lil Rue mm -hmm. had the deal, made it through the door, mm -hmm. dropped the album, had the South Carolina outline of South Carolina mm -hmm. prominent prominently displayed on the back of the album, show South Carolina some love, right. rep the city, and the city turned their back on. What, do you have any idea or some insights to this whole situation? There are a lot of conflicting stories on it. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, i say it, I don't care. I've heard talks that he said something that made people mad. Mm -hmm. um, it talks that he had people that are hand, that were handling the business that took him for money. Mm -hmm. And once the deal went down, and and there were talks that when he got on, he left the people that helped him make it, just left them, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and if that happened, then those are some factors that would make anybody. It would be like me acting too grand to do an interview like this, you mm -hmm. know. Come on, it's bananas. You know, this is your job, but it's also your responsibility. Because once you get the opportunity, and you get the to be, once you get the opportunity to get on a platform, and you have something, you're carrying the weight, the hopes, the dreams of the place you represent. You have to think about it. That's something that a lot of artists have got to start doing. Think about it, okay? This artist from South Carolina gets uh, discovered by Warner Brothers, and they say, we're gonna blow you up, blah, 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 blah. Now, two things can happen with that artist. They can all of a sudden become Hollywood and start disrespecting everybody where they're from and have no support. Or well, they can get in, get on, and, and really say, yeah, and then come back and keep coming back and showing love to their area. And, and of course, as with anything, some, like I said, sometimes people aren't going to be happy because you're doing well. Uh, nevertheless, you, go, you, don't, you don't render you know, eye for an eye on that. So whoever supports, fine. Whoever doesn't support, fine, because guess what? They're both talking. What, um, you still, you work with artists as well. Yeah. Um, what are some of the qualities, uh, what are some of the skill sets you're looking in an artist, or looking for an artist to have before you work with them? Even before the music, they have to love the art. 
Um, a lot of people are money hungry. And they, and they have what everybody had with basketball, the, the hoop dream. Mm -hmm. All I got to do is get a, get signed. Get signed to a team, get signed to a label. You get raped. <laughs> It'll be just like those bench warmers. Some of them never get to play. Even if they get the ring, they never get to play. <laughs> so I guess it's good, as safe to say, two of the first things you're looking for is a, a, a certain... Uh, business uh, acumen and loyalty. Loyalty, love, and a set, an awareness of the conviction it takes to do this. That it is business first. The, the personal drive behind all of that though makes you maintain that responsibility we were talking about of wanting to do your best, mm -hmm. your best, not be better than so-and-so from Columbia or so-and-so from here, but your best. Michael Jordan was his best. Mm -hmm. Dwayne Wade and Kobe are their best. And you become one of the best to ever do it. Charlemagne the God started that calling me the living legend. In 2003, we both, when we both debuted on Hot 139, it was the first thing out of his mouth. Charlemagne the God, and now you're, you're hearing the sounds of the living legend, DJ Prince Scythe. I have it taped in a cassette <laughs> at home in the closet. It was in 24 hours, and uh, Big Sexy, uh, DJ Bill Black, had the drop sent back to the station, and that's what I've been called for the last 10 years. The Social Report is produced by TME Productions and distributed by the TheMinorityEye.com, a subsidiary of TME Media Group.